everybody welcome back to another episode of a gardener's journey homestead i am barbara i am so so glad that you are here today today we're going to be talking about the fall garden y'all i even wore my fall colored shirt to talk about the fall garden i mean on brand and everything but i'm so glad that you're here i'm in my sunroom so i can wear this fall color because well you know it's long sleeve but it feels good in here so i'm in my sunroom today i got my seeds got my my notes, my paper, we're going to talk about what I am planting for the fall and winter garden. I'm going to tell you my process, how I'm going about it, all the things, and then I'm going to encourage you to plant a fall garden with me. So if you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I am in Tennessee. I'm in zone 7A. And so I'm excited about the fall garden in the middle of the summer. Because if you're wondering, well, why is she talking about a fall garden in July? That's when you start to plan and think about your fall garden, y'all. So it is time right now, even though we are in the midst of summer harvest, we are in the midst of abundance, we're in the midst of high temperatures, especially if you're in my area, high heat, high humidity, and lots of rain. That's what's been the forecast today. I am excited because as I look out my sunroom, it is bright and sunshiny today, which it has not been in a couple of weeks. So I'm excited about that. I think we have two days. We're supposed to be beautiful and sunny before the rain comes back. So I will definitely be outside later today. But for now, I'm in the sunroom and I wanna to talk to you about the fall garden. So if you are um, new to gardening, listen, listen, listen. If you are new to gardening and your first time planting a garden was this summer, I want to highly encourage you do not put up your stuff and say, okay, I'm going to try again next summer. Do not let fall and winter pass you by. Because if you are a new gardener, I'm going to be honest with you. That to me is the best and easiest time to garden, especially if you're new. If you're not new, you I mean, come on, you've been around these blocks. You know that the fall and winter garden is one of the best times to garden. So first of all, what I want to know is this. I want to know who is planning on doing a fall and winter garden. I want you to put it in the comments below. If you are not planning on doing one, put that in the comments. And I want to know why. Like, I just, I'm just curious. Um, I wonder, do people not do it because they're tired from the summer? Because if so, I completely understand that. Like, by the end of the summer, I mean, exhaustion is not even a sufficient word. Um, so I get that. Maybe it's because you don't know what to plant in the fall and the winter. Maybe you don't feel like you're in the right climate or the right zone to plant. I don't know. But tell me what your reason is. And this is a safe space. There's no judgment. I'm really just being nosy. <laughs> and You know, we're going to call it curious, not nosy. Okay? Nosy has a negative connotation. I am curious as to why you are not planting a fall and winter garden. Put it in the comments below. I just want to kind of see what this community um, is doing. And for those that have done one before or this is going to be your first time let's get into it let's talk about it so for those that are new to me this is my third summer gardening so i still am a relatively new gardener and i will tell you that first of all i love gardening any time of the year and on our farm we are attempting to grow year round like every day every week in the garden we're, we're trying to have something we have, trying to have some food going on all year round, 365 days a year, right? So I've only done it, like I said, two or three times, but I'll tell you, it is a different pace in the fall and winter. And pace, I use that word on purpose. It is much slower in the fall and winter. Like if you're able to keep up with the summer, you can buy, you can absolutely keep up with the fall and winter. And so if your reason is I'm exhausted at the end of the summer, and I don't have any more energy to give, I can tell you that if you were able to keep up and you're still standing, that the fall and winter, you won't be nearly as exhausted because it's just easier. It is just easier. I don't know another way. Like if you don't garden any other time of the year, if you want to pick a season, unless you particularly care for the summer crops and you want tomatoes, versus, I don't know, lettuce or kale, then I can see where you may do summer and not fall. But if you eat the fall stuff, and we're gonna talk about what the fall stuff is, then I really wanna encourage you to grow a fall and winter garden if you've never done it before. To me, I think it's easier. 
And for a couple of reasons. One, you're not dealing with the heat. Like in my area, y'all, it's, it's you know, 99 in the 90s, typically, you know, this time of the year, it's high humidity. And so for me, either if you're living in my area, you're going to either be out there in the garden in the early hours of the morning. I'm talking like between 5 a.m. and 8 is probably pushing it. And y'all, have y'all seen me do a video at 5 a.m.? Mm -mm. And you probably are not going to see that often because that's not my jam, right? <laughs> that's not my jam. Or you're going to be gardening in the evening, you know, maybe. And again, 5 p.m. is pushing it because it's still hot. But typically, 6 to 8. And that's usually when I am out there doing the bulk of my work, okay? In the daytime, even if I had the availability, in the daytime, it's too hot. It's just too hot, especially in the hot tunnel. I mean, those temperatures are like 100 plus, and then just being out there in the middle of the day, it's too hot. But when it comes to the fall, it's not too hot. The weather is nice, it's pleasant, especially the fall temperatures. Um, in the winter, you know, obviously it's cold outside, but in my tunnel, I have a hot tunnel, um, if you're new here, in my hot tunnel, it's warm, it's pleasant, right? So it's easier just because the temperature change. Number two, the pest pressure. Like in the summer, we, I mean, if you haven't um, seen my videos, we battled a, he a huge infestation of aphids this summer. We've had Japanese beetles, we've had squash bugs. That's like the norm, right? In the summertime, you're constantly dealing with pest pressure. In the fall and the winter, the pest pressure goes like from here to like, like it drops significantly. So you don't have to combat all of the pest um, as much as you do in the summer. And then number three, you get a chance to, to garden and do crops that you can't do in the summer, right? So if you eat in the fall, I'll call it the fall palette, like the fall and winter crop palette, and you're buying that from the, from the store, it just makes sense to continue gardening and to do a fall and winter garden, okay? So that's my little spiel. Again, if you want to do it, fantastic, join me. Um, also, I put up a box last week um, on my um, YouTube. It was just like a word post um, inviting you to a free winter gardening challenge. Um, I'm not doing it, but it's, you know, I would say super friends, you know. I think it's Elliot Coleman, Ray Tyler, Jill um, Reagan, and Michael Kilpatrick. Um, it's being sponsored by Seed Time. Seed Time, again, there's a link for Seed Time below in this description. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. I've already done an extensive video on seed time, but seed time basically is how I plan my garden, right? So it is a planning calendar for the garden. You can put in all of your crops and you can um, put in what you're growing by variety. And then it is going to chart it on a calendar for you. And it's going to give you a task list. Y'all, it don't get any easier than that. So instead of you like writing on paper, you know, having sticky notes, trying to do it on a computer and a spreadsheet and make your own elaborate spreadsheet. If you get seat time, the app is free. Go to the link right down here um, in the description box. The app is free. You can literally put in your crops. It's going to chart it all for you and tell you when you should be um, direct seeding it, transplanting it, prepping your beds, cultivating and harvesting. It's going to tell you that based on your growing zone and where you are. So you don't have to figure it out. And then you go to the little task list and it tells you each week what you're supposed to be doing. So I use seed time. It is a game changer. The other point that I was making is that I made the post last week about the free winter gardening challenge. It is being put on by seed time. And those four people, um, Ray Tyler, Jill Reagan, Michael Kilpatrick, and Elliot Coleman, all, you know, mega beast people in the gardening world. All of them are doing um, sessions on the fall and winter garden. It's completely free. It's a webinar. It started last night. Um, so when you see this video, it'll be Monday. Um, when you see this video and um, it started last night, but you can get the replay. So you haven't missed only one night. So when you see this video, there's going to be another link as well. You'll see the seat time this um, app to get the free app, but then you'll also see the link to sign up for the winter garden challenge. Okay. So I hope that I have at least piqued your interest about doing the fall or winter garden calendar. So now let me show you my um, 
planting calendar for the fall using seed time. Let me show you what it looks like. So hopefully you can see my screen. I came into my office because the last time that I tried to show it while I was recording from my laptop, you probably couldn't see as well. But this is my fall um, planning calendar that I'm using in seed time. Um, so you can see I've started to put all of my stuff in. Um, and as you can see, the months are here, June, July, August, September, going all the way down. And you can see that um, my broccoli is first, the kale, um, carrots. And you can see, again, all the different crops. You can use whatever colors you want. It gives you some colors to um, go ahead and um, start with. But obviously, you can change these colors to be whatever you want them to be. So one of the things... Let me see if it'll let me, because I have Brussels sprouts on here, but I've kind of decided I'm not going to do Brussels sprouts this year, I don't think. Let's see. I've never tried this. I'm actually doing this real time. Let me see if it'll let me delete it. Hmm. Okay. I don't know how to do that. But anyway, let me show you the task. So the thing that I like about um, using this and not just keeping it in my head is with seed time, it gives me the task that I need. So you can see that I'm overdue. I should have started my broccoli seeds um, last week, but I was out of town. So we'll be doing that this week. But then you can already see the things that it's having me to start seeds on this week, which I will be doing. And I'll do a video on me starting these seeds. So that's collards, that's cabbage, and that's kale. So if I wanted to see next week's activities, then those are next week's activities, right? So basically I'm clicking on the week. You know, let's say we were in next week. It would show me this is what I need to be doing next week, right? So doing another round of kale and then preparing the beds for my care. So I like the fact that it gives me um, a to-do list based on um, what, week it, what week it is and all that. So literally... I can just add this to my to-do list and I know exactly what I'm going to be seeding. So let's go back to the calendar. I showed this before on a previous video, but let me just show you how easy it is. So let's, you would go up here to the top and add a crop. And let's say, cause I don't know if I have my lettuce and mm, I do have some lettuce in here. Let's do another lettuce. So let's do lettuce and we'll pick a variety. So let's say we were going to do let's say um adriana that's one of the ones that i like here's where you can customize the color so you can pick any of these colors it's going to give you a color that's um similar to the crop obviously uh, so that it makes sense but of course you can see i have many greens on here but let's just say we wanted to make it yellow because we wanted to make it stand out you could do that um and then you're going to do schedule and then bam 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 you see the yellow pop it up it tells you exactly when to do it so let's see if um i mean y'all it's just so easy to kind of plan your garden and then you can also do successions on here as well which i showed in a pre previous video so again this video is not necessarily about seed time but i wanted to show you because i'm planning for the fall this is how i'm doing it and i'm doing it from the beginning versus when i showed you seed time before i was already in the middle and i had already planned my summer garden and so I kind of caught up in the middle but this we're doing from the beginning um to the end so that is what it looks like so now let me show you um some of the varieties that we're going to be doing okay so you was able to see my seed time planting in real life um obviously you probably can see all the crops that I'm plant planting or planning for so I thought I would kind of go through the quick list of what I'm gonna be doing this fall, why I'm doing it, or why I took some things off the list. So I have 12 things that I'm doing for the fall. So I'm doing kale, I am doing carrots, lettuce, bok choy, radish, collards, cabbage, broccoli, spinach, cauliflower, beets, and garlic. Those are the 12 that I'm doing for the fall. Things that I kind of took off the list was Brussels sprouts. So you probably saw that on my seed time, but um, I did my planning probably like a couple weeks ago. Um, and as I was thinking, I don't think I'm going to do Brussels sprouts this year. Here's the reason why. For Brussels sprouts, um, I should have already planted, started my seeds. Not that I don't still have time. I do still have time. But ideally, the first week of July is ideally when you should be starting your Brussels sprouts seeds. 
Brussels sprouts have a long maturity, like 100 plus days. Like, it's crazy, long maturity. So that's one reason. The second thing is, is that I did Brussels sprouts two years ago, didn't really get anything. They got eaten by bugs. Last year, they were better, but they just take so long. And for what you get, I just don't want to use my garden space for it this year. That's all. If you love Brussels sprouts and it's one of your top vegetables, then definitely grow you some Brussels sprouts. But go ahead and start your seeds now. Um, I started my seeds last year in July. That worked out well, except for they got eaten by bugs, a lot of them. So I had to do a second succession in like in September. The ones that I did in July that survived definitely had Brussels sprouts sooner. The ones in September never really got big. I mean, anyway. If you love Brussels sprouts, go ahead and do them. Me, I'm not going to do them this year. I've just decided I don't even want to take up the garden space for it. Um, kale, I'm going to be doing a curly kale. Um, I'm doing a new variety called winter boar kale. Um, and I'm also going to do probably like a red Russian. Um, and I normally do like a um, the Lacento kale, which is like the dino kale. But I'm definitely doing winter boar, which is like a curly mix. And I'm going to do, um, what did I just say? The Russian red. Um, so on carrots, I'm doing something new. I got pelleted seeds for carrots. This whole broadcast direct sowing, I'm not saying I'm not going to do that. You know, carrot seeds are very, very small. So you kind of broadcast, you know, you just kind of throw them in there because it's hard to do an individual seed. And then of course you want to go and thin your carrots out. I'm not saying I'm not going to do that anymore, but I bought me some pelleted, um, seeds and the con I got were Bolero. I mean, that's the variety and it's from Johnny's. So they came in a little thing like this. And let me show you, this is new. The other reason, again, why you wanna start planning for your fall stuff is also you wanna kinda of take inventory and see what you have and what you need to get. I don't know if y'all remember, but for those that were with me last year, remember y'all, I got ready to do some carrots and I only had like one pack of carrots. Not this year. Okay, so that's what they look like. So, it's an individual pellet. Like, that's one carrot seed. And so, you have the opportunity to plant the carrot seeds like you would something else. And they won't be broadcast. And it won't be as much direct. I mean, excuse me, as much thinning. Versus, let's see if I have, I know I got carrots in here. Versus, I'm trying to find one that's already open. Now, y'all look, look at this. Now, last year, y'all, I didn't have any carrots. Now, look at this. <laughs> look, don't tell a gardener she ain't got no seeds and she can't plant what she want. Now, look at all these packs, seeds of carrots I got this year. Because last year, like, literally, y'all, I ain't have hardly but one pack of carrots. And I had to, like, scramble. Um, okay, but y'all know it. I don't want to open one of these packs, and I'm not ready yet. I'll show you one out when we start this, when we start, when we direct sow the seeds, right? So, carrot seeds, I'm doing, I'm trying pelleted. Um, also on my carrots, uh-oh, okay, I'm doing this rainbow carnival blend. Why? Because it's pretty, y'all. Y'all know I like pretty things. Because it's pretty. I just want to see the different colors. So that's more for fun. And I mean, we're going to eat them too. Um, so the Bolero, I'm going to be trying. And then I'm going to be trying a lot of these. Like these, I'll just like broadcast and direct see. These are Danvers Half Longs. I got some Red Core Chantonay, which I've never had before. Um, new Karata. We may try some of those. Anyway, we got some carrots this year, y'all. Okay, so we're going to be doing lettuce, which I've been doing lettuce, as you know. If you've been watching me, I've been doing lettuce all summer. I um, have been doing succession planting of lettuce. I'm starting lettuce like every two weeks. It's been working well. We're still in the middle of July. I have um, another round in the high tunnel going through right now. Um, it's not ready yet, but we're gonna keep just doing the lettuce like we always do. And I've been really using the Salanova Foundation Collection, like that's what I'll use for the fall. But for the summer, what I have in my tunnel right now 
are um, three new kinds that's specifically for this part of the summer, like July and August, where it's really, really hot. So um, I'll have to tell you about that when I harvest it. Um, we're gonna do bok choy. Um, remember, um, I got a whole bunch of bok choy from my farm teacher mentor. The workshop that I went to, he gave me a whole bunch of bok choy. It was so good, so good and so bountiful, so plentiful. So we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be like a baby bok choy um, is what we're gonna be doing. Where do I have it? So, glad we're talking because look, y'all, this is all the bok choy I got, these two packs. So I need to order some more bok choy um, for sure. But bok choy is in the cabbage family. You can steam it. It tastes really, really good. Or you can put it like in some Asian dishes. So I need to order bok choy. So we'll put that here to the side. Radish, I'm going to be doing. I don't necessarily like radish at all. <laughs> I'm doing radish, one, for selling purposes. Um, I'm going to try it. And it gives a nice color. Um, and then somebody said, I think if you roast them it tastes different so i'm gonna try you know i'm willing to try so we're gonna do some radish for that and i don't know yet what all kinds i'm gonna do it when i do know i'll let you know um collards that's always in my garden it's my number one winter crop collards i love collard greens love 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 and y'all i didn't got faith like okay so if you've been with me you know we tried the turnip greens last year not doing that we tried mustard greens the year before that, not doing that. This year, y'all, I'm only doing collards. And I'm probably only gonna do the Georgia Southern. Those are the collards that I like the best. I think last year I did Georgia, Champion, Vates, and something else. And I didn't like the way they were all mixed together. Meaning like when I harvested them and I cooked them, it was a different taste. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't what I wanted or what I was used to. So I think I'm sticking with Georgia Southern only because that's the ones that I know that I like. Um, cabbage, we're going to try cabbage again. And we're going to pray that we get more cabbage this year than we did last year and the year before that. Two years ago, no cabbage. Last year was the first time we got cabbages, and I think I was successful harvesting maybe... Four, four or five cabbages, somewhere along in there. Not a ton, although I planted a ton. We're gonna try it again, why? Because I love cabbage. I love, like collard greens, cabbage, like, y'all, I could eat cabbage, I eat, no, I don't eat cabbage every week, but I could eat it every week. I love cabbage. So we're gonna try it again, because that's what I like. Broccoli, we're gonna try it again. Have not been successful with broccoli. So if you have some broccoli that you know works and especially if you're in my zone please put it down below y'all my broccoli it grows but before i can harvest it either it goes to seed and all those yellow flowers are all over it and i know y'all say i can eat the leaves but y'all want to eat broccoli i want to eat broccoli heads <laughs> i don't want to eat broccoli leaves either it goes to seed or i'll go out there and it has like some kind of brown fungus on like one day it's beautiful and i think i'm trying to you know let it get bigger let it get bigger Maybe I just need to harvest it when it's small, but y'all can, can come on. Can we agree that this season I am going to grow a head of broccoli? The size that you get in the store and bring into my house to eat it, y'all. That is on my list. I love broccoli. So I know I told y'all that the, the fall planting is easier. Just because I've not grown successfully doesn't mean it's not easy. I just still need work, okay? So I'm doing broccoli. Last year I did early. Where's my broccoli? Oh, I need to order some broccoli. Because this is thin. Okay, early green, green magic, and waltham. That's what I have. So I, I need to order some more broccoli. Let me know, y'all, if this is not it. I need to have broccoli this 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 um season what else is on my list spinach my spinach did great last year for the first time that just goes to show you y'all if at first you don't succeed try try again y'all all that stuff we learned in um elementary school is coming back where's my spinach where is my oh this is my spinach right here 
Okay, it looks like I have a, a decent amount of spinach. Here's the thing, because my labeling was off last fall, I don't know which spinach performed the best. It wasn't Bloomsdale, it was something else. Yo, I probably tried five or six different kinds of spinach last year. And it was the first year that I had spinach and I still have spinach in my freezer, like for smoothies and stuff like that. Like it would, it, it was great. But that was the first year that I actually had spinach. Um, so I have Bloomsdale, I have Leveway. Le I think this is the one, one of the ones that did well. That's from Botanical Interest. We're gonna do that again. I did Fantail, it did okay. Um, there was another one I think I did called Galilee that I think a friend of mine gave me. Anyway, we have spinach. I'm gonna put it over here to the left where my seed order thing is. That'll prompt me to look for some more. I, I have enough, I think but I'm gonna look at some other varieties. What else is on my list? Cauliflower. I haven't been as successful with cauliflower, um, but last year I did get like four heads, which that's the first. I've never had any before that. So we're gonna try it. And y'all, when we roasted it, it was so good. So cauliflower's on the list in more abundance. Let me know what variety you do of cauliflower. And I think I need some more cauliflower because, hmm, I thought I had cauliflower out here. Here it is. Okay, Clementine, Snowball, Rover. I need some more cauliflower. Y'all drop some, some um, varieties in there and let me know what you got. Beets, we're gonna try beets again, but I'm holding out for these beets from this company I think it's, is it row seven? Anyway, I heard about it because I don't like beets, y'all. But I keep doing them every year because I'm trying to get beet powder for my husband. He likes beet powder to put in his smoothies. And I, I use it too. It's great for your blood. Um, but I don't like beets. Y'all keep telling me that if I roast them, they'll taste better. But last year, my beets didn't do anything. Uh, I'm gonna try it yet again. But it's these beets called Badger Flame that I keep hearing about. They have been out of stock for months. So as soon as I get the notification that they are in stock, I'm gonna get those, I'm gonna try those. Badger Flame, and I'll do like the Detroit Dark Red. Um, what else is on my list? Garlic. So garlic, I do every year. So last year I devoted two beds out here for my garlic. And then I had a row in outside. So I'm definitely gonna do two, two beds here. I may even do three um, and or I may do more outside. I don't know where it's gonna go. I gotta, so I know what I'm planting. So the next step in the process is for, is for me to kind of map out where things are going to go. Um, and I'll have to do a video on that. Um, but on my garlic, I've already ordered my garlic for the year. I got in early because I'm not gonna play this game that I can't get my garlic. Cause last year was like touch and go, touch and go, not doing it, already ordered. Um, and so when I get my garlic, I'll show you, I, there's a new kind that I'm doing that I haven't done before that I'm excited to try. And then I'll tell you all about what I ordered and all that when we get to garlic season, but that's on the list, but it's, it's ordered and done. Um, I think that's it y'all. Oh, I am going to start back doing microgreens. I still have not done a video on microgreens yet because I remember I started in the spring. I was teaching myself how to do microgreen, microgreens. And I would say I'm about 90% successful, not 100% where I wanna be. Um, but then I stopped doing the last two or three months just because one, didn't have space in the tunnel on the table um, and just been inundated with summer and all that stuff. But I am gonna do more microgreens in the fall. So I pulled out my microgreen stuff. Um, we'll be doing that. And I am gonna do a video on microgreens because if you've never done microgreens, that's again, another easy thing to do and it's absolutely wonderful for you. So if you're interested in microgreens, let me know. Let me just see if there's any interest and um, I'll do a video for you guys. Um, but I think that is it. The only other thing is, oh, for herbs, I'm gonna do, be doing cilantro because cilantro likes cool weather. So I'll be doing that. And then when it comes to flowers, I'm gonna, my plan is to do snapdragons again and overwinter them like we did last year. So that is the fall plan as it is right now. So the next step in my process, again, is to map out um, on paper where things are going to go. 
and I have to think about what is coming out from the summer and when, so I know when to put stuff, know where I'm gonna put stuff out. Because again, we can plan now, we can start our seeds and it'll be ready to transplant. You know, some of these things will be ready to transplant like in six weeks, which would be like the end of August. But if I don't think about where I'm gonna put it, then I may not have a space for it because stuff is still growing, especially in the tunnel, because the tunnel of course is a season extension. And so I have to be really aware of what I'm gonna put in there and timing it and when, um, because I'm not pulling out some good tomatoes <laughs> to put my spinach in, not at the end of August. Now maybe at the end of September, but not at the end of August, if my tomatoes are still going good. So I gotta think about that. And y'all know I told y'all I wasn't gonna plant anything in the in ground in fall or winter. I may change my mind, we'll see. Anyway, that's the next part of the process. So the next step is for me to actually start the seeds and I'll try to take you along with me as I do that and then to plan where it's going to go. I probably should do that first. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me today as we talked about the fall garden. I cannot wait to see your comments of who's doing one, who's not doing one and why and suggestions on crops um, or varieties that we talked about something that you want me to try that you love. Give me all the things, give me all the comments. Wanna see it, wanna see it. So it's hot outside today, but I'm feeling good because it also reminds you that even though we're talking about it in July, it reminds you that it's a season, y'all. The summer season will be over soon. And for those who've been with me, you know, like in February when we were starting seeds, we could not wait for the summer. We could not wait to put our stuff, stuff out. We were hawking the last frost dates. And now we're here, we're tired and we're exhausted at the summer, but it's only for a time. So I wanna encourage you, if you are in the middle of your summer madness, like me, all the harvest is coming in, it's hot outside, you're growing weary. I wanna encourage you, don't give up. Don't give up. It is just for a season. It's just for a few more weeks. And before you know it, you will have harvested your last tomato, your last pepper. And by November, you're going to be wondering and thinking, oh, when's the time to plan for summer again? That's how it goes when you're a gardener, right? So don't give up. Be encouraged. And then also be thinking about all the yummy stuff that we can grow in the fall. So Thank you guys for being with me today and taking time out of your day to spend your day with me. And remember, gardening is a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.